Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters for making this video possible. I would also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well, so please check the link in the description for more details. My name is Sava, and today we are investigating how to detect multicollinearity in your regression model specification. And we are investigating multicollinearity based on the data set we have already used in a couple of previous videos on multiple linear regression and F-test, so check those videos out if you're interested in these basic concepts. However, now let's just discuss our data set briefly. It's concerned with the determinants of uh, economic growth in a set of 131 countries, and it tries to relate GDP per capita growth in 2019 to initial log GDP per capita, gross capital formation for indirect investment as a proportion of GDP, inflation rates, and government spending. And uh, the source of the data is world development indicators, as usual. And uh, the logic of the procedure that we're going to implement today, the logic of multicollinearity detection, is to figure out whether there is perfect multicollinearity between the explanatory variables, that is, those five variables except the GDP per capita growth, which is our dependent variable, which is our Y. Multicollinearity is generally a problem that violates Gauss Markov assumptions and leads to the estimators of the coefficients to be noisy and unreliable. So checking for multicollinearity is generally considered good practice before you start running your regression estimations. So how one might investigate the presence of multicollinearity? Well, there are two main testing frameworks that all have to do with the determinant of the correlation matrix between the explanatory variables, and those are the so-called Haitovsky test that has been developed in the 1960s, and a preceding version of this test is called the Farag-Glober test. And they both use the determinant of the correlation matrix and uh, utilize the concept that a modified statistic based on such determinant behaves according to a chi-squared distribution. So we would be able to run those two tests and uh, test two distinct null hypotheses. The first null hypothesis in the Farrer global test is that the regressors are perfectly orthogonal. That is, the determinant of the correlation matrix of those is exactly 1, and that would mean that the respective chi-squared stat is exactly 0, and the Haitovsky test has as its null hypothesis perfect multicollinearity. That is, that the determinant of such a correlation matrix is exactly 0, and that is something we should worry about. Basically, those two tests provide a very rich picture in terms of whether the regressors are either perfectly orthogonal, which is an ideal case that's very rarely reached in practice, whether they're perfectly multicollinear or perfectly dependent linearly of each other, and that is something that we seek to avoid, and whether it's somewhere in between, neither perfectly orthogonal nor perfectly multicollinear. So to start our estimations, let's just calculate quickly a correlation matrix uh, across all six of our variables, and then consider the determinant of the correlation matrix of independent variables, that is, uh, the correlation matrix of variables two through six. Here, to quickly run that, you could obviously use a data analysis tab and uh, just post the correlation matrix like that, but I wanted to show a quick procedure that can be implemented easily using the index function. So here, we'll just uh, quickly enumerate the variables from 1 to 6, and we can use the index function to refer first to an observation in the first row. So we can just lock this row uh, through and through and refer to the variable identifier over here, locking the row in that case. Then we can refer to the same procedure in the last row, in row 133, with the same variable identifier in cell C135. And then we can impose the correlation function and, copying this formula, change the variable identifier. So when we drag it across, we'll flexibly calculate uh, two-way correlations between all potential combinations of variables. So here, instead of C135 with the row locked, we are referring to A137 with the column locked instead. And we are copying that in place of C135 
over here and we're closing the parentheses and we can finally enforce the formula and as a good sanity check we see that the correlation of a variable with itself is one by definition that's something to be expected and then we can enforce this for the whole matrix having ones at the diagonal and uh, uh, bivariate correlations between our variables in all other cells of the matrix and we're only concerned with this bit this five by five matrix of our independent explanatory variables our axis and we will be able to calculate the main uh, conceptual uh, point of both tests both the Farah Glober and the Khatovsky tests that is the determinant of such five by five matrix so we can simply use the m determ function that calculates the determinant of any matrix and uh, input our five by five correlation matrix between explanatory variables over here and enforce this formula and we get a determinant of 0 0.73 approximately which is uh, closer to 1 which is perfect orthogonality than to 0 which is perfect multicollinearity but now we'll test how significantly different from either 1 or 0 this determinant is so here for the Farah Global test we can just calculate the natural logarithm of such a determinant and we get minus 0 0.32 and for the Haitovsky test, we can calculate the natural logarithm of 1 minus such a determinant, and we get minus 1.29. Then we need to consider uh, more uh, carefully the test statistics that are chi-square distributed for both of those tests, and we see that the logarithm of either the determinant or 1 minus determinant is multiplied by a constant k, and the constant k can be expressed in a formula over here. It's dependent on the sample size large n and the number of explanatory variables small n. In our case, the small n is just equal to 5, because we've got a 5 by 5 matrix, 5 explanatory variables, so we can just type in 5 over here. And our large n is just our sample size, number of observations in our sample, so we can just count the uh, number of variables, number of observations in any column, as we like, so let's just count our number of entries in the economic growth column, and we get 131 as our sample size, as our large n. And we can calculate our k constant straight away, uh, so just transferring this formula into the language of Excel, minus large n minus 1 minus 2 times small n plus 5 divided by 6. And that gives us a k of minus 127 and a half. Now we need to consider the degrees of freedom uh, of the chi-squared distribution of our test statistics. And those are just n times n minus 1 over 2 which is basically the number of all meaningful correlations that exist between our explanatory variables. So we can just input n times n minus 1 divided by 2. So our degrees of freedom for both tests, for both chi-squared distributions, are equal to 10. And now we can finally calculate the final test statistics for the Farah Glober and Haitovsky multicollinearity tests. So for Farah Glober, we multiply k by the natural logarithm of the determinant itself. And for the Haitovsky test, for the Haitovsky statistic, we multiply k by the logarithm of 1 minus the determinant of the correlation matrix, and we get 165 approximately. And now we can calculate the p-values of both tests to see whether we should uh, reject or accept the null hypothesis of perfect orthogonality for Farah Glober and perfect multicollinearity for Haitovsky. And here we are just using, as usual, right-tailed chi-squared distributions, inputting the respective statistics, and the degrees of freedom. And as degrees of freedom are the same, we can just lock the row over here and drag this formula down. And we can see that the p-values for both tests are very, very small. They're both much smaller than the uh, confidence interval of 1%. And it means that both null hypotheses have to be rejected. Our regressors are not perfectly orthogonal, as the Fora Globa p-value is below 1%, but they're not perfectly multicollinear as the Haitovsky p-value is also less than 1%. The best case scenario where your regressors are quite close to perfect orthogonality would be if the Haitovsky p-value is significant and the Farah Glober is not, and the worst case scenario where the model is simply unusable due to very close to perfect multicollinearity would be when the Farah Glober p-value is small, less than 1%, and the Haitovsky p-value is very large, higher than 1% or higher than 5% or 10%, depending on your uh, confidence interval of choice. That would mean that the model has to be reworked or some of the regressors need to be eliminated from the model to ensure reliability. However, in our case, we've got some uh, midpoint scenario where we can still use this model. However, keeping in mind that some of the regressors are indeed 
not orthogonal to each other. For example, the most uh, notable case here would be gross capital formation quite uh, negatively related to government spending, with a correlation of minus 0.33. That is perhaps the reason for why the Fire Global p-value is significant and our regresses are not perfectly orthogonal. Nevertheless, this model is still usable and you can quite prudently apply it in your analysis, because the main test to look for is the Haitovsky p-value, to be less than the critical interval of your choice. And that's all there is for applying the Farah-Globa and Haitovsky test to detecting orthogonality or multicollinearity in your regression model. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics you would like me to record. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and support us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.